Hello. So today I want to show you how you can stream via your own OBS at home with an encoder or a phone or anything. And that way you get protection from going offline for your stream. You can also add overlays at home on your OBS PC and you can then also add alerts and things like that. And we're doing this step by step. The guide is interactive. I have made different videos. So at a point in the video, where if you, for example, use an Apple phone instead of an Android phone, you can then click to a different video. There will be cards all around and usually the next video is in the end screen and you just go on with whatever you have from there. Hope this is helpful and um, let's uh, get to it. So basically you would be streaming, be starting with the phone because it's easier to diagnose things. The phone apps that we are using for this are pretty good as giving us error messages. So we get the setup up and running with the phone first, see that everything works, and then we head into setting up the encoder. So you would be streaming from the phone to the internet, and then from the internet it goes to your own router, to your OBS PC, and then from your OBS PC back to the router, and then to the platform that you're streaming to, in this case Twitch, but it could be YouTube or Trovo or Cake or Facebook or whatever. There is another advantage by using this setup apart from the disconnection protection, and that is that you're actually saving data on your mobile data connection because we are using H.265, which is a codec that is about 30 to 50% more efficient than a H.264 which is what you stream to typically to Twitch and YouTube and Trovo and basically all the streaming platforms. So that means that when, like in the case where you basically stream to Twitch, um, so you stream RTMP H264 at 8000 bit rate, okay, BPS, to Twitch, right? And that's the maximum that Twitch sort of will take. You can actually push it higher, but you will then lose all your transcoding so that your viewers can't choose different resolutions. So you need 8 megabit to send your stream from home to Twitch. But for the same quality of image on H.265, you will only need 4,500 to 5,000 kbps on this link because we are using SRT plus H265 aka HEFC and that is the bigger benefit is mobile data is expensive so basically 4,500 to 5,000 kbps of SRT plus H265, aka HEVC, will give you the same image quality as the 8,000 that you're sending via RTMP and H264 um, to Twitch. Also, SRT has a fixed latency, so you don't suddenly get a massive delay because your, your network quality varies. It copes much better with the mobile connection. And that is one more reason why we picked this type of setup. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is install OBS Studio. You will get OBS Studio from obsproject.com. In my case, I have the Windows version for Windows 10 and 11, highlights, release notes, bits and pieces. That has been downloading. We cancel that because I already have, uh, have that installed. You download that and you install that and that's pretty much straightforward and just take tick all the options that you want. And then we have OBS Studio. So the first thing you have to figure out is what your outside IP is, what your inside IP is, and are you behind CGNet. So I have a, an initial test set up here. Um, so try to interactively demonstrate on how all of this works. So the first things we find out is what is our internal IP for our stream PC. So for that, I tend to go down the route and I use the command prompt. So you click on that. Okay. And then I type IP config. So 
this is the IP address of our PC. And we will need that for the port forwarding in the router. We will need that for the configuration of the streaming application on your mobile phone for testing initially. And you will need that for a couple other bits. So take note of that. And in, in your router, you should actually have made this a fixed IP so that your, your OBS PC always gets the same IP. So 1055.199.7 in my case. The other IP address that's interesting to us is the default gateway. So it's 1055.199.254 in my case. And that is the IP address of your router. And you will need that address to get access to the configuration of your router. All the other stuff is not interesting. You might even have IPv6 addresses there. You can ignore those. So we're logging into the wireless router. The password is likely to be under the router or you set it at some point or something. I'm taking this as an example with a TP-Link router. And go to advanced and we go to network. And the first thing we want to do is we want to fix the IP of the OBS PC. So we go down here in uh, Let's see here, LAN settings. And then we want to add an address reservation. Scan. The machine that I'm taking for this example is Tor. And as uh, previous shown in the video, I had the 1055.199.7 IP, so we save that. And that means the next time I will get that IP address. So we have OBS on this PC here, and we figure out it's uh, 10 dot 55.199.7. And we need to find out our outside IP address. To find your IP, you can just type what's my IP in Google, and I will actually tell you here's your IP address. In this case, it has given me an IPv6. That's not so good. So we go to fix and click on the first link. What's my IP? So as you can see, there's my, my public IP. Copied that. The next thing I'm doing is I'm running trace RT in a command prompt to my own outside public IP to determine if I'm behind CGNet, so if I can pull it forward or not. And in this case, I have two lines um, where I'm not behind CGNet, where if you go, for example, um, let's disconnect from the wireless again, disconnect. What's my IP? I have now switched to another internet connection where I know that I am behind CGNet. And just to demonstrate on how you can detect this, CGNet is basically when your internet provider is sharing one single IP between multiple customers and that means you can't port forward. You can't get access to the public IP and open for ports. So I have one line with the private IP and then have my public IP. Here I have one line with the private IP, second line with the private IP. And it continues on and that is a indicator that I'm more than likely am behind CGNet. So port forwarding will not work for me. So in this case, you should click above and uh, continue on to a video about external services or a tunnel. We have now established that we're not behind CGNet and we have also figured out what our outside IP address is. So that is 91.189. 7211. And yeah, my writing is bad. Also, in this example, I have Twitch as the final platform. It doesn't really matter which platform you have. So the next thing then is to uh, set up the media source and then test with the phone. Let's start um, OBS. 
Um, we have a, a clean canvas here. This is a new OBS installation. It is the latest version that I have installed. As you can see, it's 29.1.3, 64-bit version for Windows. Um, main scene is here and we need, a new, first of all, we need to create our uh, OBS source. Um, so the, 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 what we use here is a media source. Okay, let me call that the uh, SRT camera. That's just what I call it for now. Okay. This is not a local file. Very important is that you disable restart playback when the source becomes active because Loopy's SRT switcher, which we will use later, will not detect that the stream has come back if this is, uh, this is set. So we then go in and we'll, um, we'll add our, our URL and that is SRT colon forward slash forward slash so and what we use here now is we use 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 as the IP. Doesn't matter what your local IP is. What this does it is listens basically on all IP addresses that are assigned to this PC. It's like a wildcard. So you can use this and you never have to change this again. Colon 22222 or whatever port you choose. Mode equals listener and connect timeout equals 3000. I will go into these timeout values later. Five million. Import format, import of MPEG TS. and then disable show nothing when play pick and so basically that is all you need in this click on okay so then you basically go and you take the source here and you say transform and basically say fit to screen and then we lock it down and that's that's our srt source set up so we're logging into the wireless router, then go to net forwarding. That's our next thing. And we go to virtual servers. And we say add, and we say, let's see service type. We say SRT, external port 2222, internal IP. That's the IP of our OBS machine. So in my case, 1055.199.7, internal port I'm using the same port and very important SRT is UDP it is not TCP so we enable this entry and that's that so and that is the port forwarding sorted next thing then is to go by testing connecting the phone to the wireless and then stream to the PC just to see that the media source works correctly so the connection will be to the wireless router and down to the OBS PC. At this point, this video ends and uh, you can select if you want to test with an iPhone or an Android phone. So if you click on the appropriate link for the appropriate video to go on and please don't forget to like and maybe subscribe to the channel. Thank you.